Welcome to my channel Ministry of Literature. This is Farooq and in this video we are going to talk about the Old English period which is from the 5th to the 11th century AD. Now we are also going to talk about the most important work of the time, Beowulf. So let's jump right in. Britannia, as England was known before, was ruled by the Romans, by the Roman Empire, starting from about the 43 AD for about 350, uh, 350 years uh, after that. At the beginning of the 5th century, the Roman Empire begins to crumble and the time also sees um, the eastern part of uh, Britain being, uh, uh, at least attempts being made uh, right from that time, from the early 5th century, uh, to conquer, uh, conquer Britain by these Germanic tribes. As the Roman Empire became weak, uh, the Germans were, the Germanic tribes were successful in uh, uh, occupying some of the places in the eastern parts of England, uh, of Britain, and then moving on towards the mainland. The Germanic tribes uh, who moved, who conquered and ruled over Britain uh, for about uh, another 600 years uh, were from Scandinavia. For a Germanic tribe, for a Germanic society that included the Angles, the Saxons and the Jews, uh, bravery, honor and glory were essential. We'll see a, a lot of, 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 of sort of flavor of, of this uh, when we look at the poem uh, Beowulf that, was, uh, that is said to be written up at about uh, the time when the uh, Germanic tribes moved from Scandinavia uh, and it spoke about their forefathers, um, uh, at, at least it painted a picture of the forefathers in Scandinavia. The three main tribes that we discussed, the Angles, Saxons and the Jutes, occupied the northern, middle and the uh, southern part of uh, Britain. As they settled down in the central and the eastern part of Britannia, the indigenous population was pushed towards uh, the other side, which included Ireland, Scotland and Wales. As we move toward the 8th and the 10th century, we see invasions uh, by the Danes and the Vikings, uh, and they were successful to uh, quite an extent, but uh, we still have the Anglo-Saxon culture dominating Britain. Um, and they also began to refer to the land as the Angleland or the land of the Angles. There were several uh, Anglo-Saxon kingdoms that were spread over Britannia and they were unified under King Alfred. Of course this continued till the middle of the 11th century, 1066 uh, to be precise, when another Germanic tribe, uh, the Normans, expelled Danes and the Vikings and also to a large extent uh, brought an end to the Anglo-Saxon culture. A few words about the society, like I mentioned, they were a Germanic warrior society, which meant uh, they were, uh, they, they placed a lot of importance to um, uh, the conduct in the battlefield, bravery, valor, etc. It was an aristocratic uh, society. So the Anglo-Saxon society was a patriarchal society. It was a polytheistic society as well. Polytheistic, which means uh, worshippers of the pagan gods and goddesses. There are multiple gods. Um, and uh, some of the examples, uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, one of the members of the Avengers, yes, Thor, uh, comes from the Anglo-Saxon uh, times. He's a Norse god. Another example is Goddess Freya, uh, who is a goddess of sexuality and fertility. The Anglo-Saxon society was uh, one of the earliest converts uh, to Christianity. And we can also see a, a beautiful amalgamation of the pagan culture and the Christianity in the poem. It is an important theme of how pagan culture was uh, presented to the Christian society of the time. It's a beautiful attempt of uh, um, mixing two cultures, two different cultures, which, which is pagan culture at one hand and then also the Christianity on, uh, on the other hand. The language also sounds a uh, lot like a Germanic language um, and uh, we, we do have some of the words that have come down from the time to now. Uh, the days of the week is a good example. Six of the seven days of the week are derived from the Anglo-Saxon language, except one, which is the Saturday, uh, derived from Latin. The earliest literature was oral and uh, passed down from one generation to, to the other, uh, from parents to the children, from uh, a teacher to, a, to the student, etc. Uh, including Beowulf, which was uh, written down much later. Songs were sung by the minstrels, also called the, uh, the shoops, with the accompaniment of the, of the harp, uh, an instrument like the lyre. <laughs> 